hello. I've arrived. All right, so, Archites. Let's see, not a whole lot to be said at this point, basically. <clears throat> yeah, I hoped to, I had hoped to stream a little bit more this week, but unfortunately, business is business. And so I, I was very busy throughout the week and very tired. And I'm still very tired right now. But I am less so, because I didn't have to work quite as much today. So yes, let's see. Before we get into things, what is there to say? Well, we're playing Arknights today. Already said that. Um, let's see. I've been working on getting the VODs the past, for the past few... I don't want to say past few weeks, because I don't think they've been consistently every week, but you know. If the three most recent streams, the VODs for the three most recent streams have been at this point rendered and are ready to be uploaded. I would have started on that today, but I didn't have time. Didn't have time before the stream started, unfortunately. Let's see. So those VODs should be going up sometime next week. I expect probably... Honestly, I guess they could go up as early as, as tomorrow, but one way or another, those will most likely be going up sometime early next week. But yes. Um, let's see. VODs, stream. Oh, I should also say, for one of those VODs, the, the previous Arknights VOD, I actually... Yeah, there was some sort of audio issue, and basically the game audio just did not happen. Yeah, as far as I could tell, that just was a thing completely throughout the whole thing, not just in like, not just that it didn't record into the channel that I usually record game audio into, but just that it didn't record at all, which suggests that it was not audible on stream either. So yeah, so I looked into that, I, I double-checked all of my audio settings, and it turns out that, well, I'm still not 100% sure what the issue is, because it should have worked, based on my understanding, but uh, it didn't. So, it is what it is. But yes, other than that, um, what is there to say? Yeah, we just went over... I feel like we're going through the business at an, unusual, an unusually fast rate today. But yes, anyway, so, odds, the night stream, one particular VOD without game audio. I think that should be basically everything that needs to be said. Um, I suppose for tonight's VOD, we might be, or VOD? Not a VOD yet. But yes, for tonight's stream, it might be a little bit, a little bit shorter than usual. Because again, I am feeling a little bit tired. But I refuse to let this week go by without an Arknight stream. But yes. So next week, we should be back to the usual collab with Chevy Chefs. We'll be playing a new game as of this point. We are currently planning on playing Coffee Talk. But yes, a game in a similar vein to Valhalla, which we have been playing, but with more of a fantasy theme and taking place within a coffee shop rather than being, I suppose, cyberpunk themed and taking place within a bar. Um... Beyond that, there's very little that I know about the game. Uh, hmm. Oh, also, I do have a, a topic of discussion for, for tonight's stream, as I have with three, with most of the previous Arknight streams. I was debating whether or not to put that at the, at the start or end of tonight's stream, but I think I'm going to stick with doing it at the end. I might experiment with a little bit experiment a little bit more going forward, but as of right now, the plan is to continue doing things as I have been. And so yeah, I think that should cover basically everything that needs to be said. So once again, I guess, oh, schedule, schedule for next week. I, hmm, I've forgotten offhand what day we're stream on, Chaps and I. It's Wednesday, I think? <laughs> Wednesday, 8.30 p.m.? That sounds about right. If not, you will be updated on my Twitter. Uh, I do, once again, I do intend to get the Tumblr up and running. 
There will be links to that once it is ready, I suppose. Yeah, I guess there isn't really all that much that needs to be done. I just need to start using it, basically, but... but yes, so 8.30 p.m. Central Time should be the next, uh, should be the next Coffee Talk stream, or rather the first Coffee Talk stream. And other than that, you can expect a another Arknight stream at some point after that. Yeah, Monday and Tuesday are unlikely to be days that I will stream on going forward due to other other responsibilities. And, and yeah, Sunday is just a day that I do not stream in general. Always has been. But yeah. I think that should more or less cover everything. In fact, I will go so far as to say that it shouldn't more or less cover everything. That should cover everything that is relevant. So, video game. Still getting used to the new new scene layout. Here we are. But yes. So, as I recall, and I wrote down in the notes, so it should be accurate. But as I recall, <coughs> We had just concluded Operation 1-6 previously. Yeah, this is the one with the roadblocks. I think, I think I alluded to this, but I didn't demonstrate it. You can look at the maps of operations that you have. Uh, I believe you can look at the, the maps of operations, even if you haven't done them yet, as long as they're unlocked. And then once you have started the mission, you can view any, any enemies that have spawned during the mission, basically. So you can get a little bit more information on enemies through here. It might take some time to go over enemy enemy entries at some point. That seems like the sort of thing that I would do. Yeah, I will say one thing. Uh, these stats that you can see here are not super, not super accurate. Not incredibly accurate. They are, in some places, fairly inaccurate. Because, yeah, just because a creature has, say, D in attack doesn't mean that it necessarily has less attack than a creature that has C in attack. In this case, I'm pretty sure that the Originium Slug Alphas do have a lower attack than the Rioters. But, yeah, the, the lettered values of stats on the various enemies that you see here are not necessarily absolute. And I'm not entirely sure what they're based on. To be honest. But yeah, it will vary a fair amount. So don't necessarily expect that. Don't expect, don't base your entire strategy upon those letters, I suppose. Let's see. Have there, no, there haven't been any changes to the team since last time we played. The only changes that we made recently were the changes, you know, that happened during the previous stream. I suppose. We will hop right into things. It feels... Yeah, this... <laughs> I suppose by commenting on it like this, I'm delaying it, but it feels like this stream is starting up a lot faster than, than previous ones, which makes me feel like I've forgotten something. That's it. I guess it might just be that I'm prepared for once. Because I did actually go out of my way to prepare a little bit more than usual. Which is part of the reason why we're a little bit late. Ah, Sheppy Sheps. Good to see you as well. Oh, for some reason, chat isn't appearing. That's strange. Um, okay. There's something wrong. So I guess my instincts were close, if not necessarily entirely accurate. Hmm, what's up with this? Has this been a thing for a while? Chat. Where's chat? Is that? There we go. Hmm. It feels like that's definitely not the chat that we were uh, the chat window that was there before. Where's the other one? Anyway, <laughs> I apologize for getting distracted and not really uh, not really commenting on it, chaps. But thank you for being here. I hope I hope that you have a a good rest, given that you are lurking. I assume you're most likely going to be doing resting in some fashion. Hmm. So, I don't know. Hmm, I don't know where the chat went. Well, 
This doesn't stick out very well against the background, but it might be the best that we have for the moment. Hmm. Yeah, this definitely isn't great for readability, but I don't... Yeah, I don't want to get too into the weeds currently. So, unless there is another obvious thing wrong, I think we'll just get, you know, get back into it. Yeah, nothing, nothing else seems to be awry, so I suppose we will simply have to live with this. Anyway, so we did skip over all of the tutorials that we encountered previously, which is one of them, it seems, or no, no, yeah, one of them it looks like. But yeah, I think there is, there is a tutorial, a specific tutorial that I've been wanting to see because there was some, some fun dialogue in it. I don't know that this is that one, but okay, in fact, this is definitely, I'm pretty confident this is not that one. Maybe I'm not quite as prepared as I thought I was. Well, you know what? We'll take a chance on tutorial number nine here, and we'll just sort of proceed. <coughs> Indirect protection. And yeah, it seems that, by all indications, it seems that we do have game audio. And if anyone would care to uh, confirm, I would very much appreciate that. But I think the audio should be good. It looks like it is there. And I messed with my settings to double check. I even did a little recording previously, which I also did last time. It also didn't work last time, but things are slightly different than they were that time. So here's hoping. <coughs> Jessica, can you spot the difference on the ground? Ah, Instructor Doberman, what's that? We'll often come across various structures or terrain on the battlefield. If used properly, they can buy us precious time. In this operation, the stun generator can deal lots of damage and stun enemies once activated. Make sure you use it at the right time. Ansel, I'm counting on you now. But yes, so once again, this is another... Another feature of the terrain, so to speak. Yeah, much like the roadblocks previous in the previous mission. I think yeah. Number six was the was the one with the roadblocks. Like with the roadblocks, this is something that you can, you know, is not a unit, but you can make use of deployment points to use it. Yes, it will cause a stunning blast to stun enemies. And also blast them. Yeah, you won't see a whole lot of these sorts of things in a whole lot of different levels. But they do show up sometimes. Yeah, as per Doberman's words, knowing when to use it is pretty, pretty useful. Knowing, yeah, basically, you know, the enemies will move onto a certain square, you can see, and then they, then they can be targeted by our units. So if we were to activate that before they were on that square, and you know, it were to go off before they walked onto that square, because there's a slight delay, then they would have been able to, you know, it, w it would have stunned them, but we wouldn't have been able to damage them during that time. Thank goodness for that. And so yeah, because of the positioning, we were able to stun them and damage them while they were stunned, taking out three of them, I think, before they had a chance to deal any damage to our operators. Not that we were in any tremendous risk of anything going poorly, given the the fact that this was a tutorial, but you know. <clears throat> Alright, Operation 1-7. Prepare for impact. Spread out. There's too much coming. At this rate, every single building in this city is going to be destroyed. This is looking bad. <sighs> we have to relocate. <sighs> Hold on. Ah, it's falling. It's falling. The sky is crashing down. Ah, oh, it hurts. I, man, my hand, where's my hand? No, no way, I don't want to die. Ah. 
Defenders. Protect our casters. Huh. What's that sound? A massive cluster just toppled the building across the street from us. Get down. Yeah. Don't stand there, medic. Watch out. Oh no. Medic, get out of there. Uh. Huh? Doctor? Doctor pushed the medic out of the way? Wouldn't that mean... Doctor? No. Doctor. Doctor Tiber. Huh? Nero's charging forward. Get down, Doctor. Uh, she, ma she made it in time. She did it. She saved the Doctor. <laughs> Nero, Doctor, hurry back over here. It's fine now. I can still hold my shield. Jump, Doctor. Jump! Doctor. Doctor. You're... You're not hurt? Thanks to our good friend Neil, we are indeed not. How could you put yourself in danger like that? At least take me with you so I can protect you. I can't allow you to be harmed. Especially right before my eyes. We should count ourselves lucky that everyone is still safe, but how much longer is this going to last? How long are we going to be able to stay alive? Hmm. Are fewer rocks falling now? Though we managed to weather the first impact. But we have to be careful still. Nobody knows how long this catastrophe will continue for. At least we weren't caught dead in the middle of it. You were lucky to slip through. Mm-hmm. How's everyone doing? Looks like all the operators made it through just fine. Some were lightly injured, but considering the circumstances, we were quite fortunate. We... we made it. <sighs> Some of the reunion members have also... Huh? Huh. Ah! Rhodes Island! What? Uh, they're still trying to attack us? Rhodes Island. What's wrong with you bunch? Come back here. They've gone insane. Do they not value their lives at all? Doberman. We have no choice. We'll suppress them first and then immediately relocate. All right, let's hop back into things. Good to be playing Ark Knights again. But yes, so in this mission, you will see a stun generator. That's not a great idea right now, Durin. We're kind of in a dangerous position, but you know, it is what it is, I suppose. But yes, who do we want to deploy first? I don't think, I don't believe that this is a mission where there's going to be any significant proportion of ranged units, so we probably won't need to worry too much about that. And so yes, the stun generator is not really worth using on Originium slugs, I don't think. So we will not do that. So wait until there's something, something more worthy to use our our equipment on, I suppose you could call it. Mm, equipment is a bit of a strong term, considering that it definitely doesn't belong to us, but it is what it is. Yeah, we're definitely... Ah, right, right, right. I forgot. I forgot that the traps can't be deployed onto a space that a unit is occupying. So, it looks like we might need a little bit more assistance. We'll deploy wild man. Ah, we do have a, we do have at least one ranged enemy, the Molotov thrower. Yeah, interesting note about Molotov throwers is that their abilities do physical damage, which is not necessarily all that interesting in and of itself. 
but there is a character that we will likely see in the not too distant future who has an ability uh whoops has an ability uh that i believe is called fireproof jacket or something like that and if you can oh dear if you can pay attention to your operator's health And I did end up using that stun generator on slugs, specifically as I said that I wasn't going to do, but you know. As it turns out, we are now in the phase of the game where we do have to start thinking about things a little bit. But yes, where was I? Oh, anyway, so the Molotov throwers, their melee or their ranged attack is a Molotov, as you may have guessed from the name. Yeah, and accordingly, or no, that is not what I that is not what I was going to say. Anyway, it does physical damage, is what I meant to say. But there is a character who we will encounter at some point, most likely, who has an ability called Fireproof Jacket or something like that that increases their uh, resistance, which, whoop, as you may have may recall, uh, does nothing against physical damage. I suppose there is a little bit more to a Molotov than just the fire. It is an explosive, after all. <clears throat> we made it. We've not only managed to shake off Reunion, but the catastrophe is also visibly weakening. But we're still in a terrible situation. Everyone continue to exercise caution. The catastrophe... The streets are now buried underneath rubble and collapsed buildings are blocking all the roads. Is the or eh, is the originium already beginning to metastasize? We're almost here, but everything is blocking our way. If we can just just hmm. They're here. What's here? Reunion? They caught up to us? Uh -huh. There's so many of them. They didn't just catch up to us. They're everywhere. From the plaza, the streets, the buildings, and even all the ruins. Look at those numbers. Ah. That explains why they weren't afraid of the catastrophe at all, except for the ones who ended up being crushed. Even if we assume... The catastrophe wiped out half their men. They still have enough people here to kill a do us a dozen times over. Hm. Don't stop moving. We'll continue moving towards our retreat route. We're done for if we stop in a wide open area. At least make it to the plaza's exit before regrouping. Now, we have to fight. After we break through their line, we'll slip out in the ensuing chaos. Are you sure it'll work? The chance is slim, but we're out of options. But we're out of options. But even if they outnumber us ten to one, if they're just a bunch of thugs, we still have a chance. Stay calm. Prepare for battle. Defensive formations. <sighs> With these numbers, if they wanted to take over Chernobog, they might actually be able to do it. There are too many. Way too many of them. Where did Reunion find all these infected? We're completely surrounded. I never asked for this kind of respect from Reunion. The entire plaza is swarming with Reunion forces. They've stopped moving. <sighs> Only a single enemy is approaching our defensive line. And a very distinctive one at that. Why is that person walking towards us all alone? Are they sending an envoy? I don't think so. She, according to our intel, she's, there's something peculiar about her scent. Neil, I can't exactly put my finger on it, but. It's the smell of steel and sulfur, as if something was burning. 
If, really, if it is, really is fire, then... All operators, be on maximum alert. That person is... Reunion's ruler. Kalula. Hmm. I reckon her flames are powerful enough to swallow Terra entirely. Quite an intimidating sight, that. And now, we're on to a special stage. <clears throat> Amia, take the doctor with you. Go, now. No, I won't leave you. Surely you can feel it as well. She's... If you don't leave, the entire rescue team will die here. That Tulula. She's a living monster. Amia. We'll be fine as long as we stand together. What about the doctor, then? Can you ensure the doctor's safety? Hmm. Team E4. We will stay behind and hold the line. We must ensure that Amia, Dr. Tiber, and the medic teams escape safely. No. My squad will handle this. Ace, be rational. Now's the, not the time to argue over this. I am rational. Surely you can see it as well. Everything around her is melting. I'm not going to leave you all here to fight alone. Rhodes Island won't abandon you. Amya, time is of the essence. You have to escape. You should trust me. I can't bear to see Rhodes Island sacrifice anyone. Think about our goal. Think about what we came here for. This isn't the time to talk about that still. The, the heat is concentrating in her hands? Is she distorting the space around her? No, that's the superheated air around her. Watch out, she's getting ready to use her arts. No. You can't. Nero, come back, now! That's not her. You'll be killed if you... Silence. Ah! 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 Nero. <laughs> Stay back. Don't worry about me. It's just a little warm. What are you saying? Don't worry? You don't have a single intact piece of armor on you, and you're telling me not to worry. You mustn't fight her anymore. I already said. Stay back. Nero, you stubborn son of a... Hmm? Get down. <laughs> what is it this time? Invisible flames just swept over our head. Fall back. This entire block is melting. Don't sacrifice yourself in vain. Just what monstrosity am I fighting against? We have to interrupt her casting somehow. Snipers, take aim at the enemy. Resistance will usher hope into this land. But resistance will not change your fate. Fire! Janabog has already attained liberation. Our work here is done, and your group has proven to be quite interesting. What? However, that is all you are worth. You have chosen poorly. Rhodes Island, you should have stood firmly with us, the infected. What's going on? Why is the entire plaza getting scorched? What happened just now? can't breathe. It burns. Rocks, bolts, arrows. They're all gone. In a heartbeat, every object around her has been reduced to nothingness. You have the resilience of liberators. Not even ashes remain. Amia, you know what must be done. Someone has to stop her. But I grow tired of this. Amia!
This is the price you must pay for, for slaughtering your fellow infected. I shall grant you an ending that I am quite fond of. Disappear. Run. Hurry. That amount of heat at such a scale. No. No. Protect Ami and the doctor. Quick. You won't make it. I'll block her. Uh... Huh? Uh, uh, Amia? You will not hurt them. I will never allow you to do that. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I suppose... Yeah, there seems to be some flashing lights here, so that might be... That's something I'll need to take note of. Yeah, that will be something to... Yeah, to warn of in the VOD. <clears throat> I must protect everyone. Amiya is holding back the enemy's arts? All by herself? It's no good. That power is too tremendous. Even Amiya won't be able to... She won't be able to hold out for long. Amiya! Don't worry. Don't worry about me. I can handle this. I want to... I must protect you all. Dark matter is sealing the enemy's arts within the plaza. <clears throat> her, her barrier is catching on fire. Amia, stop! Your ring will... I don't care. Even if... Doctor, I'm sorry. Even if this brings disaster. Even if I... I don't want to lose the person dearest to me ever again. Very good. Ah. Ah. Amia. Ah. We're going to lose her. What are you doing? Destroying that she-dragon's arts. You. O oh, light of Kazimiris, the Radiant Knight offers her body to thee. Doctor, just go. We'll help Amia, but you have to... Uh, oh. What? That's enough, Amia. <sighs> You've done well. Let us share your burden. I... Amia! Doberman, take her with you. I'll see you soon. Ace. Ace. No, Ace! Promise me that you'll... I'm sorry, Dr. Tiber. You might not remember me, but I remember you, and I know what kind of person you are. There will come a day when you and Amia will face this cruel land together. That is why you must cherish her, Doctor. Let's go. Godspeed. All right, and with that, Let's begin. Operation 1-8. Resolve. Yeah, a dramatic turn there. <clears throat> One that's a little bit harsh on my voice. Let's see, we can put Cantabile a little ways back. I'll hold off on that for until enemies are a little bit closer. I'm aware of what I'm doing. Sit. Yes, we are indeed at a point in the game where we must think. Think about what we are to do. So instead of placing essentially the bare minimum of units, let's actually place uh, a reasonable amount of them. Seems like a good idea to me. Let's see, we'll place Bubble here. 
And alongside, we will deploy Cutter. Probably should have deployed Cutter first, actually, just to... So that bubble would, uh... Take a... What's the word I'm looking for? Bubble would be the... Oh, dear. Oh, well. I've already completed this stage, uh, without issue, so I don't, I don't care too, too much. But yes, here we have our first reunion leader, Crown Slayer. I won't sleep on the job. Yes, yeah, so as it said, Crown Slayer is a special unit. She is able to get around your operators and potentially attack from inconvenient angles. And I've realized now that I've placed Cruz in such a way that she can't actually interact with Crown Slayer in any meaningful way. But, you know, it is what it is. At least we have some units still able to target her. I think... Yeah, we will position... Actually, no, because we can't... Well, I still could have positioned Robin such that she could attack her. But I was going to try and... Oh, I've gotten completely distracted now. I'm with you. Hmm. Well, I think Crown Slayer should still go down. So we're not in a terrible state. So my plan didn't quite go as as I had uh, planned it to be. Oh well. All right. A success is a, is a success, even if it's not quite uh, what I was hoping for. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that trap was also a success, even if though it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Robin's positioning, however, is pretty poor. I definitely could have done a lot better with that. Yeah, no more space for units. In your name. But the enemies up there are dealt with. So we'll start to move some units down just to get things finished off a little bit quicker. Yeah, I don't think... Bubble has a skill here, but I don't think... Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with damage, so I'm not going to concern myself with it. So yeah, not a super, not a super uh, impressive first showing of Crown Slayer. Not a super impressive first showing of me playing a boss stage either, but you know. <clears throat> Alright, tutorial 10. Yeah, I think, let's see, we have not too, too much left to go, but I did have Again, a thing that I wanted to talk about after this. So we'll have to have to think about how much I want to invest in this in time in yeah, for time. We're already about an hour into the stream. <clears throat> Range units, both allies and enemies, have a priority system. When selecting the target to attack, you need to master this in order to better, better control the flow of battle. Yeah, just what I was getting at earlier. Jessica, get ready. It's your, it's your time to be deployed. Finally, I'm about to enter a battle. I, I'm getting nervous. Really now? You're as timid as a newbie. How did Blacksteel even put a weapon in your hands? You know, that's a rare, precious weapon. Uh, it's not what you think. I actually paid quite a bit of money for it. Hmm. So... I think this is the one that I was thinking of. So, as you can see, Jessica has a gun. This is somewhat unusual as far as Arknight's characters go. You see a lot of snipers, but very few people with any sort of firearm. Most snipers use a bow of some sort or a crossbow. Some of them use even, even more uh, unconventional ranged weapons. Yes, very few of them use guns. Jessica, as a ranged operator, you are very fragile and may fall quickly when exposed to the enemy's attacks. Ah, uh, I, I think I can hold on for a little longer. You are doing fine, but don't push yourself too hard, Jessica. This will be my last remote class. Doctor will join your combat training in person afterward. Doctor, remember that most enemy units will choose to attack the last operator deployed. Please deploy Beagle immediately to draw the fire of enemy ranged units. 
in CS. So this includes even if the ranged units can't actually, you know, walk towards them, which I guess is also true of enemies on, or of units on range tiles. So yeah, so, you know, your unit doesn't have to be able to, doesn't have to be able to interact with the enemy in any way in order to be able to draw the enemy's aggro. Tip. Yeah, so Jessica has a gun, like I was saying, which is very rare. And I, I don't know. I feel like if it had happened already, I would know. But, uh, but yeah, the noteworthiness of this fact is going to be brought up again in another tutorial, which is sort of what I, why I was going through the tutorials in the first place. So yeah, I think we'll do. We'll do one more stage, I think, and then I'll get to, yeah, then I will get to the, the presentation, I suppose, for lack of a better term. Operation 110. Yeah, I think definitely going forward, I'm definitely going to spend some time rethinking my lineup a little bit because my units are not quite I don't know I didn't really think about uh I didn't really think about who and what who I was going to be deploying or I didn't yeah I didn't really think much about the team I try to fill some very basic goals in terms of uh you know team composition but beyond that I never I didn't really didn't really think things out very much which is not something that you necessarily want to do, but it is what I did, did. So, once again, we're going to have an enemy slip past our defenses, unless I were to... Mm. Oh, okay, there we go. I was half expecting them to not be able to... Uh, half expecting her to not be able to block that enemy, but we did it. So, we will retreat Wild Mane, deploy Bubble, and deploy Cutter as well, for a little bit more damage and enemy blocking. Hmm, I'm out of melee units. Um, Alright. So, you know how I said that I didn't really think about my team composition? Uh, case in point, I suppose. So, we'll place some traps here. And let's see, we can deploy another unit. Nope, not you. We'll deploy a medic. I suppose, you know what? Nero's pretty capable. Nero, as a defender, has the ability to. Nero is a defender who has the ability to heal allies. And okay, do we. I think. I think, yeah, between everyone that we've got here, we should be able to hold that with a few traps here and there. Alright, we're doing good. But yeah, so Nero can't just heal whenever. She can only heal when she is making an attack. This is not necessarily true of all healing defenders, but it is true of Nero. I suppose I should be using these, uh, these clips a little bit more proactively because they do have a redeploy time on them. We will deploy... I suppose here okay, is just as, just as good as the other position. Hmm. And then deploy here for a little bit of healing. Because now we're getting towards the end of the mission when we'll probably need it the most. Or to the, the part of the mission where we'll probably need it the most anyway. Anyway, I feel confident about our position right here. Let's see, who do we... Probably Cantabile is the better choice. I suppose we didn't really have a whole lot of enemy left there to deploy Cantabile to, to eliminate, but oh well. Just a little bit crude, just a little bit. So yeah, so once again, I'll have to think a little bit more about my, my lineup. 
to yeah i'm definitely we're gonna want a little bit more ground presence i don't have a lot of you know melee units melee units um i don't know i've got a decent number of them but i don't think i have all that much damage among them cutter has got pretty good damage yeah her attack isn't super high compared to say well i guess melampa is much higher level but uh cutter's damage is not super high let's see if i can find another guard who's a similar level and perhaps a similar rarity too moose here is pretty pretty close you can see that moose has more attack but uh cutter makes up for her relative lack of attack by having the ability to attack twice but yeah so we don't have a whole lot of damage amongst our melee units wild main gets a little bit of attack speed i suppose and Cantabile does have does have some good attack or gets a, an attack boost. But the problem with Cantabile and Wildmane is that they both have buffs that only apply for a period of time after they are deployed. So anyway, basically all this is to say I'm probably going to switch out at least one of my melee units for another guard, not unlike Cutter. I might I think I need a little bit more range damage also. The Range, or I suppose ranged physical damage. Basically, I'm going to add another sniper, most likely. Because, yeah, the ranged, the, eh, the ranged arts damage that I'm getting from Durin and uh, Amia isn't really all that helpful currently. Because we don't have a lot of enemies that have a whole lot of defense. Yeah, once again, these stats are not the end-all be-all, but... You know, not a lot of enemies have a whole lot of defense, so we can probably make do with just one, just one caster, who will be in this case almost certainly Amia. Yes, I don't intend to switch out Amia from our team very often or for very long, just because it feels it feels appropriate to have her around. <clears throat> anyway, so. I think that's basically everything that needs to be said about the team. I don't have any specific specific characters in mind that I will that I want to switch out. I think I don't know. I'm looking forward to well, no. The the medics we have are fine. I think Pure Stream is Pure Stream. Yeah, Pure Stream is a no. Okay, she's a yeah. The therapist archetype has sort of a wider range, which is not super useful on the, these maps. They're not super large. So Pure Stream, we might find another unit who could uh, provide a little bit more utility than her as a medic. Anyway, so like I was saying, we're going to talk about things. And so, in order for that to happen, I'm going to move over a little bit. Where am I? Where, where is me? There we are. Move over just a little bit and make room for... If I can find it. Hold on. There we go. A big blank space. But... This isn't just any blank space, because this is a blank space that will have something in it soon. This is a blank space that will have... Amia. Yes, so, once again, we're going to talk about a little bit of Arknight's lore, a few units here and there, all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's nice to be back at this. Yeah, I definitely I definitely enjoyed doing that for the, the first two Arknight streams, and I definitely missed it on the third. Yes. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about the infection, or the thief, and a few infected characters. We're not going to go into huge detail. We're more going to give a sort of general overview of a few few things that are sort of uh, related to or the thief. We'll go into the disease itself into, in more detail later on. It will be explored more in the story and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so once again, like I said, 
you'll be talking about a few infected. So yes. So, one thing. This isn't necessarily a lore thing, but this is a thing that for me. So you can notice Amya here. Oops. My tablet's behaving a little bit oddly. Oh dear. Uh. Are we good? Okay, we're good. Anyway. So. Oh, we're not good. Why is my... Okay, my tablet pen is behaving oddly. My tablet is working fine, it seems like. That's fine. That's fine. That's... Should be fine. I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. That tool's working. Hmm. Okay, the pressure's not working. Which is not a huge deal. But, you know, I would like it to work. Ideally. But... Hmm. Okay, it should be. The test says it works, and now it isn't working at all again. Okay, so... We're not going to use pressure sensitivity, and we're not going to use my pen, either, it seems like, because that doesn't want to work. So... Anyway. One thing, one little misconception that I had going into Arknights is, if you'll notice, Amya here has these big ears. Yeah, I think we, we've already talked about Amya and uh, her being a goddess, thus uh, having traits of rabbits. Yeah, we're not talking about that specifically. We're talking, I guess, you know, in general, more about operators and their, I guess, not just operators, but just characters and archetypes in general, and their various animal traits. So for a while, when I was first getting into Arknights, I sort of assumed that that was a trait of the infection. I assumed that they were essentially humans who were mutated by the infection to not only, you know, not only did they have a disease, but it also changed their physical traits. And so this is not quite the case. The traits, the rabbit traits that Amya has are perfectly normal. They are perfectly normal for one of her lineage, basically, and and so on and so forth. You know, you'll see other other characters who have various traits. Doberman has traits of a dog, for instance. Neural has traits of a horse. I'll talk a little bit about Neural's design later in a later video, I think, a later stream. But yeah, so the animal traits that operators have are not necessarily the result of oropathy. But, orpathy can cause certain physical changes. So here are a few characters who have experienced such. So yeah, so we'll start with Moose here. Yes, Moose is a feline. My dog didn't like that, apparently. <laughs> yes, Moose is a feline. We'll move Estelle and, well, not move them, but we'll hide Estelle and Province because they're not super relevant right now. But yes. So, Moose here is a feline, so she naturally has some cat traits, you can see her ears here. I really don't like drawing with the mouse, this is very unpleasant. And you'll notice that she also has two tails, which is a little bit unusual, there's not a whole lot of cats that have traits like that. And you'll also notice she has a big, strange looking sort of paw claw here. This is also somewhat unusual, but yes. So. Moose's particular oropathy causes her causes her a uh, mutations in her hands, both of her hands, in fact, given based on the what I've read about her, the dial, whoop, yeah, the way that the game describes it and all that. Pressing the wrong hotkeys. Oh dear. So I'm not quite as practiced as I as I thought I was, but oh well. I really would like it if my pen worked at all. A lot more convenient than the mouse. But anyway, so, Moose has, you know, the normal feline traits, the ears and a tail. Most do not have two. But she also has some unusual traits in the form of her, yeah, in the form of her, uh, hands. Yeah. The exact extent of her mutations in her hands have not been seen. And, uh, oh, I thought I, uh, 
Unfortunately, I, I didn't save the image, but I guess I can go and find it real quick. Yes, so Moose... Moose has, you know, a fairly normal looking hand and one sort of large, unusual looking hand. And you may see, see that and think, oh, clearly that is the, you know, unusual mutated trait that she has. But uh, it seems that that is not quite the case. Uh, given, given her dialogue and what we see of her in sort of other art that she is featured in, her hands seem to be normal, at least part of the time. Yeah, they seem to be normal at least part of the time, with the sort of mutation, whatever that may be, being something that sort of comes and goes. And let's see if I can get this added here smoothly. Not quite as smooth as I would like it. I don't see the... oh, where's the... Well, as I don't... I'm not a huge fan of this strange black background that shouldn't be there, but oh well. So anyway, you can see that Moose's hands are relatively normal in this, her Elite 2 art. I suppose I should say, every character, when they are promoted to Elite 2, has a new piece of artwork associated with them. Yeah, Moose's... Moose... Yeah. Moose's hands, as you can see here, are relatively normal. You can see a little bit of unusual development here. Those are Oropithia lesions, essentially the Oropith, uh, Originium crystals breaking through the skin. Yeah, very unpleasant. And you can also see two gloves. You can see two gloves here. So this that she has is not her mutated hand. That is simply a glove, as far as can be determined. And she has dialogue that refers to her gloves and all that, how she doesn't want you to see her hands, and also how her hands, you know, are sometimes not less less obviously mutated than others. Yeah, so as far as I'm aware, there's no art in the game that depicts the full extent, the true nature of her mutations in, in her hands. But yes, anyway. Moving on to a few other examples, we have uh, Estelle here. Yeah, so Estelle, you can see, has some crocodilian traits. Yeah, she has the large crocodilian tail, and she also has these horns, which are not a traditional crocodilian trait, and not a traditional trait of her of her race, the Archosaurians. Yeah. So those large horns are another mutation. Those are those are also caused by orophithy. And you can also see some other sort of some other structures that seem to be again, these are not structures that are found on these are not structures that are found on other archosaurians, things like this. Suggesting that these are also perhaps caused by oropathy. They don't quite look like Originium, based on what we what we have seen. I think Amia might also have some, yeah. Amia also has oropathy lesions. But yeah, so these don't quite look like oropathy lesions. So there are ones that have a larger, you know, don't look like veins of or Originium, but look like larger crystals breaking through the skin. These do resemble that somewhat, but they also resemble scales somewhat, so it's hard to tell precisely what they are. Yeah, so Estelle has these large horns. She's quite she's quite insecure about them. But uh, as for another character with a mutated trait, this is Province. And she has a big, big tail. Yeah, it is. She is a... Uh, uh, what's the, uh, Lupo. Lupo. I nearly forgot for a second. So she has wolf traits. Yeah, the wolf ears, wolf tail. The tail is unusually large. Yeah, you may notice that Estelle also has a large tail. This is not this is not commented on. So presumably her tail is relatively normal. But uh, Province is Province's tail <coughs> is specifically called out as being one that is unusual, unusual in nature. Yeah, and while Estelle sees her sort of mutated traits, and Moose sees her mutated traits that we do not see. 
and they both have a rather negative view of them. Providence is actually quite quite pleased with her tail. She considers it to be a uh, sort of a, a charm point, if you will. She's quite fond of it. She enjoys grooming it, and she she offers offers to let you look at it if you like. But yeah. So another another trait, another trait that is seen among some uh, some operators, largely, I think, I think exclusively, but I didn't do enough research to say that conclusively. To my knowledge, one thing that is seen exclusively among uh, infected operators is oh, right, I did have I did have the other, <laughs> I did have Moose's Elite Two Art queued up. So I didn't need to go through all that trouble. Oh well. But yes. So these creatures here are not normal animals. Oop. These are not normal animals. You may look at those and say, oh, but those are cats. You know, a little bit stylized in some ways, but those are clearly cats. What what is so unusual about them? The unusual thing about them is that cats, as we know them, do not exist on Terra. Yes, this is specifically noted in her in Moose's profile that these creatures are unusual, unlike anything else that is known to exist on on this planet. Uh, so yes, so cats do not exist on Terra. In fact, as far as we can tell, no animal that we are aware of on Earth exists on Terra normally. So you know there are birds and such, or things that resemble birds, such as in the case of. Estelle's little friend here, who has a name. It does have a name, but I've forgotten it, unfortunately. Yeah, such creatures do have, uh... Yes, so Estelle's, Estelle's companion is a normal creature that does normally exist on Terra. And the type of creature that this, that this being is, is a foul beast. Yes, a foul beast, which is to say F-O-W-L, as in bird you know, or bird-related, bird-related, you know. It is a foul beast. It is not a bird. That is that is an inaccurate way to describe them. So there are a lot of various beasts on Terra. There are things known as burden beasts, meat beasts, uh, a few other, few other types of beasts that I'm once again drawing a blank on. But animals that we know on Earth do not exist on Terra in the form that we know of them. I didn't prepare any images of them, but there are a few, number of operators who have animals that show up sort of in their Elite 2 art that are non-diegetic as, as, as far as we're aware. You know, they are not something that actually exists. They are just sort of there to represent the character, represent the animal that they're based on. But the, the little cats, the kitties as they are referred to, in Moose's art, are definitively creatures that exist on Terra, but they are something anomalous. They are something that has only been associated with Moose, as far as we can tell. And they are, again, something that is considered unusual. Something that is inexplicable, basically. But yes, so this large fellow behind Province is named Mr. Grape. Yes, we know that because Province refers to him as such. So yeah, I suppose Province is a is an example here of something we were talking about earlier, because she is a sniper and she uses a crossbow. So once again, crossbows or bows are sort of the the standard for snipers in Arknights. You'll again very rarely see any sniper using a a gun or anything of the sort, unless they are from a particular region unless they are from Laterano. But we will get into that a little bit more somewhere down the line. Suffice it to say that guns are unusual, like I have said a few times here. Yeah, so Mr. Grape is another unusual, uh, unusual creature. But yeah, he is not, not referred to basically at all in, in uh, Province's profile. It is only in some of her dialogue where she talks about him. And she also mentions that she, you know, she and Mr. Grape are, are good buddies. They're friends. But she doesn't remember where or when she met Mr. Grape. Which is an interesting, mysterious note. 
given that Mr. Great, again, doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be a creature that is native to Terra, as far as we're aware. But yes. So, we've talked a little bit about Oropathy. We know that it's a disease, we know that it's fatal. But we don't know all that much about what it does, as of this point. And so, what it does is, it can be a lot of things. Yeah, it's a disease that can manifest in a lot of different ways, it can have a lot of different effects. Uh, Amia mentioned earlier that her oropathy gives her certain abilities and can give the infected in general certain abilities. So for Amia, it lets her use her arts without using a staff, which is pretty nice. There are, you know, this is not, however, as far as we can tell, something that is universal, or at least if it is, it is not something that is universally utilized. There are a number of other casters that are infected that don't have or that do use staves still. And there are a number, there are a few casters who don't seem to use stabs, but are not known to be infected. Sip. Basically every opera or every caster does have some sort of thing that they seem to, you know, other than the infected ones. And again, even including the infected ones sometimes. But uh, every caster seems to have most casters. Again, Amia is an exception. Most casters do seem to have some sort of object that they use to channel their arts to some extent, and and all that. So, Oropathy, the infection, is able to give you certain abilities, is able to impart certain powers on you to amplify your arts abilities, and so on and so forth, uh, to, the, to, the, to the point where <clears throat> Originium Adaptability is sort of the, the measure in a character's profile of how well they're able to use their arts. Again, you don't necessarily need to be infected to use arts, and being infected won't necessarily make your arts more powerful, or necessarily give you sort of a unique ability to use arts, as far as we can tell. And there are characters who have sort of seemingly pretty unique arts that are not infected. Yeah, these sort of seem to be something of a natural trait of theirs. And we'll see a few of those characters later, I think. One of them is a character that I'm quite fond of, who we'll actually meet in a, in a near suit eh, upcoming chapter. But yes. So, Oropathy, as, we, as we've seen so far, we know that it is fatal, but we've not seen anyone die of it, of course, because we haven't been playing across a time span that anyone would really have time to perish of a terminal illness. So, you know, you might you might see that and think, well, you know, what does what does oropathy do? How does it actually affect people? So here is an example of a character who also suffers from oropathy. This is uh, Aafiala. I'm not a hundred percent sure that I'm pronouncing that properly, but it's probably pretty decently close. Uh, Aafiala here. So she she suffers from oropathy, and you'll notice she does have a staff. She is a caster. Yeah, she suffers from oropathy and yet is a caster, uses a staff and all that. Um, her particular uh, case of oropathy has significantly impacted her hearing. And I think it's... I didn't see specific mention of it, but I think it, it sort of seems to be implied that it's also affected her vision to a certain extent. But her, her hearing is very severely impacted to the point where she, she makes use of hearing aids. And it, even with them, has a great deal of difficulty uh, communicating. So yes, so that is a thing that uh, has occurred in Ayafiala's Ayafiala's particular infection. It can manifest in different ways, but it it is, as far you know, largely a neurological disorder. So it sort of affects some people's you know, it affects a lot of people's like perceptions, it affects their, their, what's the word I'm looking for? Sadly, I'm not quite as researched in medical tech terminology as I might like to be to describe this disease, but, uh, but yeah, it affects, you know, it is largely neurological in nature, or at least a lot of its effects are neurological. It can have effects such as mutations, like we've gone over. Yeah, it can have beneficial effects, 
and it can also have a lot of negative effects. It can it causes like severe pain. Again, it can cause uh, degeneration in your physical abilities and your senses. Again, in your even in just your ability to sort of like uh, I don't. Again, I don't have the specific terminology in mind, so I I'm going to yeah. I will refrain from from talking too much to avoid saying something insensitive. But yeah. Anyway, so beyond being a example of a character who suffers from orphathy that does impair their abilities to a, a notable extent, uh, Aethyal is also another example of a character who has uh, little little buddies. Again, the existence of these creatures. These, I think, I think she refers to them as sheepies, or uh, no, like uh, little little lambs. I think. But yeah, the existence of these creatures is again noted to be something unusual. They are, as far as can be determined, uh, related exclusively to Af Yala. They are. They only appear in her. Uh, you know, only appear when she is around, basically, or in you know the places where she resides. And they, you know, they seem to be something that is exclusively, exclusively associated with her, in universe and out. That's it. So the existence of creatures such as these, these uh, little lambs, Mr. Grape, and the moose's kitties, may have something to do with or originium with their infection. It might not. What exactly, what exactly it is, or what exactly they are, and what they represent, is again somewhat unclear. And maybe it will be cleared up a little bit, because again, I haven't read too, too much into the specifics of the plot going forward. And so yeah. So one other character that I wanted to talk about is another character who's infected. So as we've stated, there's a lot of characters who were... Yeah, originium or oropathy is a disease, and it's a disease that carries a pretty significant uh, social stigma. Yeah, the, the infected are looked down upon, they aren't allowed to live in certain places, in certain in entire countries sometimes, and even in the places where they are allowed to live, they are often treated poorly. And so Utage here is an example of a character who is infected, and... Uh, I wanted to bring up her backstory a little bit, largely because I, I just think it's kind of kind of fun. Here I am talking about prejudice and about to say that something is fun, but you'll you'll get what I'm saying. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh when Utage con eh, eh, contracted orphathy, she was sent to uh sent to Rhodes Island to seek treatment. And uh the sword you see, she 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 is wearing on her side. Yeah, that was given to her by her mother when she learned that she, that uh, Utage had, had given, had eh, gotten infected with a orphathy. And uh, she specifically gave her this sword so that she could uh, protect herself from bullies. Which is, uh, which is excellent. It's very, very fun. <laughs> very good parenting. But yes. Here is Utage about to engage in her uh, anti-bullying countermeasures. But yes, the creature behind Utage here is an example of one that appears in the character's Elite 2 art, but doesn't seem to have anything to do with the... You know, doesn't seem to be something that has a actual physical existence in the world, as far as we can tell. It is not commented upon in her... You know, it's not commented upon in her profile in any way. She doesn't mention it. And it just sort of never seems to show up. So we, as far as we can tell, this is purely a symbolic representation of, purely a symbolic representation of Utage. But yeah, anyway, again, I just wanted to, to bring up Utage because I think the, the, the story behind why he, why she has her sword is, is a little bit heartwarming and a little bit, a little bit funny. So yes, so. I think that's about everything that, that I wanted to go over today. Yeah, again, it was a little bit shorter than I would like, but I got started later than I would like, so there's not really all that much avoiding it. 
And so, given that we are have reached the end, we've talked about all that there is to talk about, I suppose it's about time that we got set up for a raid. And I'm not logged in to Twitch on my computer, even though I was last time I opened my browser. Interesting. <laughs> all right, let's see if I'm logged into Twitch. Did I say Twitter? I meant Twitch. Let's see if I'm logged into Twitch on my other computer so that I can see who's online and raid them, maybe. I'd like that. But yes, I hope you've all enjoyed Arc Nights today. I've definitely enjoyed getting back to it, and I've enjoyed giving this little presentation. I'm glad that I... I thought about doing, uh, doing a stream yesterday, and I almost, almost did. But I, in the end, I did decide to delay a little bit longer so that I could have more time to repair this in some degree, or to any degree, basically. And I'm glad I did. But yes. I could have done a little bit more, but, you know, there's always room for improvement. So, yeah, so tonight, I think, we'll go and visit someone we haven't seen in a, in a fair while. We'll get the raid set up. Yeah, I guess. Well, first, first, I'm going to go over the business so that I don't forget and have to do it in a big rush once we reach the end of the timer. So, the business. Um, once again, next week, we should be continuing the collab series with Sheppy Chefs with a new game. You'll be playing Coffee Talk. And I suppose that's all that they're... Well, no. There's more to be said because I need to talk about the time that's going to happen. It will be Wednesday, I believe, 8.30 p.m. Central Time is what we planned on. And uh, if, if I am incorrect, feel free to correct me, Sheppy. And once again, if, you know, if anything changes, we will, we will keep you informed. Yeah, so that should be happening on Wednesday. Other than that, I should be doing another Arc Night stream sometime after that in the week, sometime between Thursday and, and Saturday, up to and including those days, but uh, we don't know for sure just yet. So, that's that, I suppose. Yeah. More details will be forthcoming. Yeah, so, tonight we are going to raid uh, uh, Chibi. It's been a little while since we've seen her. Um, yeah, playing some Apex Legends with uh, one by the name of Ember Moore, it looks like. Alright, let's see. Did I type that correctly? Yes, I did. So, let's see. Yes, right, raid message. The customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you will be well for the next time I see you. Thank you all very much for being here. Hold on. Hello. Oh, I just realized I didn't do my intro either. <laughs> so I, I flubbed my outro a little bit and I, I completely forgot to do my intro. Oh well. Thanks. Uh, bye. Farewell. I have, hope you have a, a nice night until I see you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>